happened to our nation. Father, you look for a man to stand in the gap, but you found none. Well, Father, we say, look again. There is a battle for this nation. Father, we are asking as a church of Canada, by your spirit, you would give us the grace to stand for life. Stand for justice. Oh, Canada, like never before, we stand on guard for thee. Four years ago already since Battle for Canada Edmonton. What a memory. Um, what history was made by the Ecclesia coming together in different geographical locations. We had a moment of time together, which became a bit of a movement and became of a family. And this program is Eagle Eye, Prophetic Perspectives with Art Lucier and Friends. I am Art Lucier. I do have a friend in, in the back room waiting for us here in just a moment. But this, this program is mainly towards Canadians, uh, intercessors on the Canadian firewall, and we love you so much. Canada is in your debt. 
firewall watchmen and warriors. And, um, and we've got a, a great, I feel informative program for you. You know, God, it's so amazing that God does speak now one way, now another, though men may not per perceive it, but we need the voice of God in our lives, don't we? And we're so excited to uh, have this program to bring a bit of understanding of the voice of God, what is needed to pray in these days and these hours. We want to give you a bit of perspective and better equip you in how to pray and what to pray for and what's going on. And <clears throat> so before I bring up our guests, I just, you know, the reason um, we showed that Battle for Canada promo that was, you know, from four years ago, as many of you know, we laid down the battle for Canada. I uh, felt because of the word of the Lord that came through a prophet, there would only be five battle for Canada's, the last one being in Winnipeg. And as you know, July 1st, 2022, uh, we completed our fifth and final battle for Canada. And I was very willing before the Lord to just lay it down. And we did. And uh, not that our ministry stopped, it just would look different. And we started to really move more in revival, reformation, incredible time under the tent in Moose Jaw, where people are healed, delivered, set free. Prince Albert, people are still talking about it. Well, lo and behold, through a series of events and different prophetic voices and our staff speaking into it, and with the nudging of God's voice, we came to the table and chatted about it. And we felt it is, it is to be picked up again, even though I'm going to let, just let you know for our little ministry uh, uh, here in Kelowna, I'm um, having the task of going to another province, another city, gathering a thousand or so people and, and believing the Lord for the finances for it and so on and so forth is, it's not an easy task. I was joking with somebody this morning. I think I age a couple years each time we do an event I hope that's not true. But for all of you who were and and um, were you you prayed for it, you you came, you you sowed, you supported it, and all together, though we're you know nobody's in the kingdom per se, we're just saints, fivefold ministry leaders who just love the Lord. We're all equal at the cross. We come together, we partner together, shoulder to shoulder. Whether it's for an event or whether it's on this twenty four seven prayer firewall which we're in our 144th week wow thank you lord for such an incredible gift this firewall is and has been but the battle for canada we are picking it up again in intercessors this is a high alert dealio we believe that we are all together in the month of june to pray and intercede for the healing of canada fully um, culminating, ending with a 10-day event in the, um, I believe it's called the Centre de, de Congrès de Québec. The Centre de Congrès de Québec. It is a convention centre right across from the Quebec City Parliament, Old Town, just to walk away from the Plains of Abraham. It is a very historic, oldest city in North America, historical foundation place, um, <clears throat> and this could be the biggest venture that we have ever taken on as a ministry. No, no, it actually, it is. Um, and we are just over 80 days away. We're going to get more into the vision in, in, in the future here. Um, but we'll just say this, Quebec is rising up and they're, they're help. They're coming to our defense in Canada. I'm telling you, there is, an apostolic prophetic company raising up right now, Quebec, taking their place in the nation. Um, and they're going, and we're partnering with them as, as Canadians to fight for the full destiny of the nation of Canada. I'm going to stop there, but I will say this. The event is Jul July 22nd to J June 22nd, June 2, 2 to July 2. And it's St. Jean Baptiste day right through Canada day. And um, <clears throat> this decade is called the decade of pay. 
And pay is a root word for Passover. This is a decade of Passover. And it's about the blood of Jesus that is on our hearts that covers all and delivers us, delivers us from the darkness. There was a man who went and foran the Lord's coming, and he said, not only prepare the way, but behold the lamb. Two comments. But this event is called prepare the way from St. Jean Baptiste Day right through Canada Day. Listen, Quebec is probably the most beautiful, Quebec City, the most beautiful city in the nation of Canada in summertime at Old Town Quebec. The history, it's incredible. Um, consider it, you, this is a family holiday to come. Um, it's, 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 uh, you are needed. We need you. We'll, we'll speak more about that. Um, and, uh, just, you can go to rra.ca, rra.ca, and it'll bring you up to speed. And we're going to be going live with the registration, a whole $22, 22. That's it. Two, two, um, opening up on my birthday on the 60 day mark, April 23rd, you can go and, and for my birthday, I want you to register <laughs> for battle for Canada, Quebec. Um, speaking about Passover, before we get to our guest here, next week is Passover. And I'm so excited that we have 40 national leaders from coast to coast coming together in Woodstock, London, on, London area of Ontario, 90 minutes from Toronto, um, at the Trumpet of Life the River Church Trumpet of Life Ministries, hosted by Renee McIntyre, Renee and Brad McIntyre, pastors of, of, of the River Build. The building's called the River Trumpet, uh, Truth of Trump, Trumpet of Truth Ministries. There on Passover next Thursday, and we're going to be having Dean Briggs Briggs come um, from Kansas City. He, uh, he's there with Mike Bickle. He's going to be leading us at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the truths of this day of the great coming blood communion revival. He just wrote a book on it. And we're going to be get, joining Fatine at 3 p.m., the national leaders across Canada for a national day of communion and prayer, um, taking communion together on Passover. Uh, <clears throat> so there's there's a few seats left. Go to www.rra.ca uh, um, and we'll show you quickly that poster. It's called Rally the Troops. It's our kind of pre-gathering before Battle for Canada, Quebec. Um, if you can't join us in person, a live stream, we're, we're doing all the, the things necessary there to provide a live stream link again for you to partner in with us. We're trying to make it as affordable as we can. And we got a whole team coming from... Um, uh, 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 British Columbia for that. Alberta leaders, Mark Brisbois, Steve Holmstrom. <clears throat> um, we got Saskatchewan leaders, Manitoba. We've got Kirk Smith coming from Eastgate House of Prayer. Um, we've got Barry Miracle. Steve Long is coming. I understand that today. Found that out. Um, all these different ones coming from all over the place, coming to partner with you, Ontario. And by the way, for those who may not have never been to one of our events, we can, we'll have 40 leaders on the front row, maybe only 20, 40. It's open mic. We don't know. People say, when's my favorite speaker going to be speaking? And we say, well, I hope the Holy Spirit is your favorite speaker because he will be talking through various leaders as, as we feel the prompting of the Holy Ghost. Thursday afternoon, Thursday night, Friday morning, the Canadian Firewall track. There'll be all the intercessors leading. We're not doing an afternoon session because they like to go all day. And then we're that's on Good Friday together. And so we'll be having communion together there on Thursday, Passover, and on Good Friday, celebrating um, uh, the gift of God, which is his son for our sins, what Jesus did at the cross. And then ending with a Friday night session there in Woodstock. Um, enough of that. I want to say <clears throat> there's another good friend of ours coming. We recently found out. His name is Barry Wunsch. 
And since this is eagle eye, we love the prophetic aspect of the kingdom of God, especially on this program. And so without further ado, I want to bring on our very special guest today, no stranger to Eagle Eye, Prophet Barry Wunsch, um, one of the dear uh, brothers in the Lord, one of the RRA leaders in this nation of Canada, joining us in Woodstock next week. But here he is live from Alberta. Barry Wunsch, I caught just a bit of your episode just recently today on Elijah List. Welcome to Prophetic Perspectives. And uh, how are you doing today, Barry? Hey, uh, hey, Art, and, and hey, Canada. I, I just, what a pleasure to be with you, Art. I, uh, I just so appreciate uh, your obedience and, and your passion for, for the path that you're on. And, and honestly, I, I can say that there hasn't been an, an event that I've attended, uh, you know, with, with you folks that, that hasn't been a significant event. And honestly, we wanted to go to Woodstock and, but do we go, you know, I mean, Lord, you know, we got quite a few things, you know, on the radar. And uh, I just said, you know, Lord, we just, you know, make it clear. So it's really funny, you know, we were up in Spruce Grove at this gathering last weekend that you guys, you know, you came and, and uh, Barry Markle, you know, kind of lit her up. And uh, we have a girl comes to me on Sunday morning and she says, I had a dream about you. And I looked at your calendar and I saw two dates, Thursday, Friday. I think they're important. You're supposed to be there. <laughs> I get it. And so, uh, so I said, okay, Lord, we're going to go. And I really feel that it is a, a special assignment. In all honesty, I don't do a lot of traveling. Uh, you know, we get a lot of invitations, but, uh, you know, we're in a very narrow lane. And, and our, you know what that's like. I mean, yes, you, know, sir. We can, you know, we can do a lot of things, but if the Lord really isn't, uh, you know, pointing us there, we don't want to be there. So this, this is, is again, uh, supernatural confirmations that have come in. Uh, so we're, I, I've got a great expectation about what's, what's going to happen down there in Woodstock. You know, Barry, I'm so excited about this family. You know, we, we had this moment in time, hey, the, the battle for Canada's this moment, and we thought you know, we were obedient. Just do the five. Sometimes the Lord says, do these, and then be done. Okay, and then you've done large like, well, I was just kind of testing you. See if you'd be obedient and see if you'd follow through and see if you'd lay it down. Uh, and uh, and we did, and lo and behold, here we go. Winnipeg. What, Winnipeg was at the forks there, and the curse is broken. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, Quebec, Luc Gingras, uh, an incredible man of God of the kingdom of Quebec, he said, Art, the curse will be broken. I'm like, okay. You know, Barry, we, we do these events. We don't even know what we're doing. We just, we right. don't even know. Right. We set a table, you know, and just like, it's just so amazing. So, so excited to have you there with us, with the family in Woodstock. This moment in time. They kind of became a movement, became a family. Yeah. And so we're so thankful, Barry, that you're part of this family here in, in Canada, uh, a prophet of the nations, partnering with apostles, different fivefold ministry leaders, evangelists like Steve Holmstrom or Ty Koppel, uh, the emerging evangelists that are just coming forward, like, like uh, you know, and li like Sammy Robinson and all these ones who are, and then we've got these real pastors pastor pastor tight ones and and these healing apostles like kevin tabucci he's joining us but there's this family that's being birthed across the nation then there's these true intercessors because remember jesus was not only the apostle jesus was the prophet wasn't he he was an incredible prophet but he was also the priest the intercessor he's he he lives to make intercession we have ones like kirk smith from eastgate house of prayer coming you know, to Woodstock and part of this family. Isn't this family just yeah. incredible? Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you look and you see, you know, the, the cluster, you know, I mean, the cluster of grapes as they're crushed into a new wine, uh, you know, there, there's a humility there, there's a, an honoring, uh, you know, and, and I, with where we're going and, and with what is being released right now to be, 
be stewarded for the nation, that is of, of the, the greatest importance. And, uh, you know, I, when we get together, I mean, I just can't wait to throw my arms around and give you guys a big hug. And, and uh, the bonds grow deeper every time we gather. And, you know, and I just love what, you know, is building amongst the family within, within Canada. It is very, very much needed. And the cross-pollination, uh, again, when, when you've got every stream, you know, jumping in and, and you know, sure, we, we've got our, you know, diversity as, as we come together and it is so needed. And even in that diversity, as we honor one another, I mean, every gift is valuable. And, uh, you know, when we come together and everyone brings their equity, they, they just bring themselves, they bring their passion, they, they bring their, their, their intercession, their worship. Uh, you know, the, some of the meetings that, you know, we're in now, I mean, the, the, the hunger within the people is, I've never seen it as great as it is. And the father isn't holding back, you know, and so when you have a room that starts to roll and then they catch the wind of the spirit you know and put pressure like the the the, the collaboration that can happen in those moments with the ecclesia as as you know we open up these portals uh in the in and from those places when the decrees and the declarations are made those things they cause things to move and in Winnipeg, I remember we did, uh, Barry Mark and I poured out a drink offering. We did, a, you know, a, we did an offering kind of deal that night. And one of the things was to break, there were resources that were being withheld uh, from our First Nations people. And we're talking, I think it was $3.2 trillion. And we happen to know some of the folks in the back end of that that were working on that file. And it had come to a dead stop where there was no movement with that. And would you believe we did that, uh, that event and we did, you know, the very miracle and I, you know, I remember doing that, that uh, pouring out that drink offering. Within two days, I had a call from this brother that was involved in the backside of that. And he said, Barry, it's moving. <laughs> and so what we did in that moment, in that, prophetic declarations and decrees. And in that moment, in the heart of Canada, we brought a shift to some things that have been long withheld. And uh, so the, the, the strikes as we gather are so critical. Um, you know, even when we met up in Spruce Grove last weekend, uh, you know, I mean, another, you know, significant outpouring there, you know, when, 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 when you have leaders that have got to have a humility to step back. And, you know, I mean, honestly, I felt there was a fear of the Lord in the room. You know, the, you know I mean, when, when the altar fills and, and, you know, people scared to pick up the mic, you know, Lord, what are you doing next? And the honoring of him in those moments, when he comes in to, to, to breathe, I mean, he's going to do things in moments that we couldn't accomplish in years, you know, under our own understanding. And, uh, you know, I was taken in. I mean, I, when we were in, in Edmonton, you know, our Spruce Grove last weekend, I mean, the Lord laid me out. I mean, he, he laid me out under the, under the grand piano and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and dropped some things in me. And uh, I re released today, you know, a word that, uh, you know, actually for, for our dear friends, you know, in America, but also Canada's role in what's happening right now, in what's rolling out in the nations. And, uh, you know, during that, during that encounter, I was taken into Canada, uh, Art, and I mean, this, this is maybe hard for some people to comprehend or, or understand, and, and I get that. Uh, but, but the Lord took me, like sometimes he'll physically, like he'll take me, and whether I'm in the body or whether I'm in the spirit, I don't know, but there I am. And I'm seeing things, I feel the humidity in the room, and I'm taken into an underground chamber in Canada where the federal government leaders are meeting. And uh, behind closed doors, you know, what, what they were doing where the public couldn't see them. And, uh, and some of the things that they were and who they were under being clearly revealed. And I don't want to get you in trouble here and get you kicked off anywhere. Uh, but, but there are things that God is dealing with right now uh, that, that are 
critical not only for Canada and the United States, but the call upon Canada to fulfill her destiny to the nations, to bring healing to the nations. We're the crux of it. And so uh, before I went on, you know, on earlier today, I was on a prayer call with some dear brothers. And, uh, you know, they, you know, were just kind of, you know, taking, looking at a few things and praying. And, uh, you know, their indications are there's two nations right now. They're kind of standing in the way of what's going to happen in a global revival. And those two nations are Canada and the United States of America. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so these gatherings that we're doing are no small thing. And uh, so I'm just, I'm just going in with great anticipation and in, in submission to him. And I know that he's not, he's not going to disappoint us, but you know, it's going to look a little different. We got to be bold. We dare not hold back under the fear of man, under the fear of the religious spirit, under the spirit of Jezebel, we cannot hold back during this time. We have to be responsible to bring what he gives us because at the end of the day, there's one in whom we'll bow our knee to is the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, I know about you, Art, but I want to be found as a, as a son that's, that's done what we've been called to do. So good. You know, I want to just confirm what you said about that money that was contested, being locked up, um, that was coming to the First Peoples for different projects and so on and so forth. I mean, it, it's widely known that a lot of First Nations communities still, still do not have running water. Yeah. Um, and it's a tra travesty. Yeah, shameful. And the, the, uh, the Chief Justice was there at Winnipeg, wasn't she? Yeah. And we prayed over her. Remember that? And all the money being held back. And I remember you and Barry and Barry, the two Barrys went at it and just like, you know, the next day. Now, you didn't hear about this right away. You said maybe you said, I think it was the next day you heard it. But for some reason, Barry, the next day um, when when we were there on the stage Battle for Canada, I'm, I was doing the baptisms baptisms with with uh, the evangelist there uh who was in in at battle for canada um and uh me and him are doing baptisms at the forks and i get a message pop up saying 25 billion i believe it was 52 billion in total 52 billion towards the first peoples 52 billion that she was contending for on her portfolio 26 of it, half of it was released the next morning after you guys did that, the next morning. And why would it pop up on my phone as I'm trying to do, trying to do baptisms? What's this? What's this, this, this newsletter, you know, and just like, and I had to read them like, this was contended for as we gathered, as the equity of Canada came together at the Forks. And we said, this must be released the next day. It's national news. Um, what's yeah. going to happen in Quebec? We have no idea. We just know that we're obedient. The Holy Ghost is going to lead. And Canada, you are needed in an hour to come and lend your, your equity, your worship. There's some people say, Art, it's a little wild. I just kind of feel like I'm hanging on to your coattail. Someone said that to me today. I said, well, as long as you're hanging on, it's like, I can't talk like you. You don't need to. Just come and be part of the intercession, the worship. Come and make a stand for the nation together. Um, incredible testimony the next day. Barry, you were there, Kingdom Encounters, you know, and you just made a comment saying, you know, people might have a hard time with this about, listen, the Kingdom Encounters, like you have, these, these should... Basically, they're biblically they're normal. Peter was in a trance. Yeah. Peter was in a trance and had visions, and angels were talking to them. And Ezekiel was lifted up by his hair and shown things. And it's yeah. like the apostle Paul was like, he is. I don't even know if it. I was in the body or not, but I was in heaven. Yeah. 
Yeah. Paul was in heaven. This is all New Testament yeah. stuff, you know. Yeah. John on the island of Patmos, the angels are talking to him. He's like laying dead. Well, was he in the body or was he in the spirit? Doesn't matter. It yeah. happened. Yeah. And you know what? Uh, this needs to be normalized, Barry. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it does, Art. You know, I, I think... <sighs> When, when God starts to blow on, on something, there, there's no stopping it. And so as we, but, but you know, it, it comes at a price. And it, it really, it, it's the price is the same for all of us. You know, it right. costs us everything. And when you come to that place of surrender, where it's not, <laughs> where those outward things that want to drive us are gone, and when you say, Lord, you know, I mean, uh, and, and some of it sometimes comes with a, a terrible stripping. And sometimes it comes with, with, you know, a transition period that we can't understand, but yet it takes us to a place uh, where we have, you know, where, where we're not encumbered. And the love of God will come with a ferocity in his love to bring us into a freedom where we can flow. But, but when we just give him our yes, and, but there is also something that we don't like to talk about. And, and I'm not talking about doing it in works, but I'm talking about living a consecrated life. I'm, I'm talking about, uh, you know, setting things aside for him and what, what we're feeding on, what we're, you know, where we're spending our time, what we're, you know, indulging ourselves in. These are important things that, you know, and, and again, I don't, you know, it's not to come out of a works or a heavy kind of a thing on right. people, but, but there's a posture that we can take. And, and as we do that, and as we, we, we re release ourselves under that, he will come and he'll fulfill and he will lead and he will bring breakthroughs. And, uh, you know, we've experienced them where we still have some big battles going on in our life. You know, we, you know, it's, it, you know, it's not all peaches and cream, but you know, the Lord is faithful. And, uh, and in the end, you know, it, it drives us to the altar. It, it drives us closer to him and we're not islands under ourselves. And I'm so thankful for the you know the the family that is being built it's where amazing. where where trust is, is being established where we're getting to know one another where we're you know we can can flow as we're we're called to and so i think it's just going to continue to to grow upon us and around us you know i want to talk quickly just about something that happened in kingdom encounters but can i read a statement i wrote something about this family, about the apostolic in this hour. Some on my heart. I just, just uh, uh, grant me a second here, Barry. I want to read this out. I wrote it down. Just let's hear it. Because this is, this is an apostolic prophetic move of God that God is leading and want and, and, and restoring for such a time as this. For those who know and follow uh, the battle for Canada, we, we know, we, we, we know that in 1948, that incredible revival, which was called the Restoration Movement, because out of it came the emergence, the reemergence of apostles, prophets, you know, presbytery, singing in the spirit, so on and so forth. But then Canada was scared and there was a, there was a bit of fear and religiousness that got in there. And they made a statement in 1952, most Canadians or the church said, apostles and prophets are not for today. But I'm... Um, but you know what? God's got other plans, and we're seeing it reemerge. Yes. And this will not be stopped this time. This That's will true. not be stopped. I've got a statement about what the apostolic is for those who might be a little scared or concerned. Or um, Here's a little thing that I wrote about it. The true apostolic is not a professional hierarchy or polished bunch of polished ministers who belong to a good old boys club bringing their judgmental gavels down on out-of-the-box moves of God or kingdom realities that threaten their denominational cows. Right. The apostolic are mothers and fathers. Yes. Guardians and gatekeepers yes. of the family of God locally and at large. The protective and wise ones, true elders of the land. The apostolic ecclesia is the family of God defined. It's this family that is and will restore everything that religion has defiled. The true apostolic in this hour will build family. It will repair family. It will fight for the family. 
it is family. Yes. What do you think of that? Oh, that, that's a good word, Art. Uh, yeah, I, I love that. That just jumped into my heart the other day. You know, we were together there in Kingdom Encounters. And, you know, speaking about religi religiosity and the, and the fear and stuff, something powerful came forward. I want to, because we got a few more moments. We got, you know, another 20 minutes to unpack this a little bit. Barry, you've been speaking about some things, so we're going to address them in just a moment here. But um, <clears throat> 10 days ago, Fresh IE, Robert Wilson, a.k.a. Robert Wilson out of Winnipeg, who's been to uh, 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 numerous Battle for Canada's, basically all of them, um, at least three of them, uh, 20 album recording artists, and three-time Grammy nominee artist. He had a dream, and in the dream, there was a large anaconda coming after us. It was yellow and white. I grabbed the head. I yelled at him, grab the middle. And to the other guys, and I yelled, grab the end, and they did, and we held it down. And he said, Art, you would not let go, and you held this thing down. An anaconda, a snake, yellow and white. And right away, because if you study out dreams, interpretations, in the negative, colors have certain meanings. In the positive dreams, yellow colors have certain meanings. This was a negative dream. A snake is a negative thing in a dream for the most part. Yeah. And especially an anaconda looking to come and constrict and swallow and crush and destroy. White is re a religious spirit or religiousness, self-religious, -re self um, yeah, a religious spirit. Yellow is fear or cowardice. So that's one. Th so I brought that forward, but lo and behold, and I felt led to, and I'm like, this doesn't really fit Kingdom Encounters Weekend. But <laughs> lo and behold, what happened there? Laverne and Perry's daughter, Am Amarissa, yeah. on the very same night, on Sunday night, 10 days ago, she would have a dream that she was coming into a garden and there's a large yellow and white anaconda coming at her. She, she turned into a lion to get this snake. Well, the snake turned into a lion, and she pounced on it, pinned it down, and made it say the name Jesus. If that wasn't enough, Saturday night, while we were there at Kingdom Encounters, a guy comes up with a date stamped, met word. He had a vision of a yellow and white snake on a lady that was on her constrict, but it was empowered by heart issues, her bitterness of heart. What's the message? You know what, Barry? I've realized this. You know what, my brother? This family, we're being given authority over the religious, fearful, cowardice, empower, things that empower the snake. This principality, I declare to you, it is coming down. It's coming down. I We had the head. It was down. I'm Arissa, an eight-year-old, turning the lion. Yes. Pinned, even though it turned into that snake. Remember... The righteous will be bold as a lion. You yeah. got to shake off the fear, Canada. We got to shake off the fear of the Holy Ghost. We cannot be cowards, and we must be willing to reject the religious spirit that empowers the snake. One last thing about it, I'll say this. Remember, the dragon started off as a little serpent in the garden, but we have fed him, and now there's a dragon sitting on the peace tower of the nation of Canada. It's been released on the world and it's time and it's a call to action. And we believe that God has the answers. Yes. Over to you, Barry. Yes. Yeah. You know, Art, you know, when I see the, uh, the, the attack from the religious spirit and, and from, from Jezebel on the, the, the voice of the prophets on the voice of the body that, uh, the restriction against worship, you know, I mean, we've experienced things that, uh, you know, I, I just people wouldn't believe, but in, in a sense, we, we cannot, we will not withdraw, we will not relent, we will not hold back. You know, we need to continue in a posture of the Father, and, and He is coming with a fire, and He's bringing, He's exposing, uh, I think many of us will be surprised in the days ahead of what he's going to bring to light and uh you know in it you know i mean for me it's keeping my my heart in the right posture and in uh 
you know, separating the spirit from people and then those kind of things, because it is a spirit that we're dealing with. And there isn't uh, an organization, you know, I look at, you know, the other prophets that, you know, are, are you know, kind of out there on media and some of the brutal, uh, blatant attacks that, that come, you know, there's, there's web pages that are dedicated to, to basically shoot at us and, and, and discredit us and, and then the, the whole, uh, you know, cessationist, uh, you know, theology, you know, and then that, that, you know, comes at us continually, but, but yet as we gather in meetings, we gather and as the Lord and his graciousness comes and he takes us into places and it's almost like when there's an attack that comes, uh, to shut us down on the back side of it, there's, uh, a promotion that comes and, you know, we've seen, you know, like we've had some hard things come at us. And so as we've postured ourselves, God has come and he has brought us into other places that we would have never dreamed. And I'm talking about governmental involvement, uh, speaking into offices within the government and then having dialogue there on some very, very high levels that would be impossible, you know, without the grace of God coming in. And so, so when I look at, at, you know, the harder the enemy will come and try and come and bring and suppress, uh, God's going to breathe on the remnant and those that have postured themselves whew, to stand against this thing and not come under it. Because we, we dare not come underneath that controlling, manipulative deal. And sadly, there are a lot of places in Canada and in the United States and globally that, you know, they water down the message. They water down truth. They 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 don't want to they want to make things uh kind of you know really really safe but in doing so they they're missing they're, they're really missing out on on the power and where god wants to take us and so the uh the, there's going to be a reckoning that is that's going to happen with some of that and uh, so yeah. i i i believe and i'm praying that there's going to be encounters for some of these that that don't understand it. They've never experienced the power and the, the, the encounter with God. And, and when he comes and when he encounters you, you know, a man with an experience is never at the mercy of a man with a theory. And, uh, <clears throat> and so we can have a great intellectual knowledge. We can know the scripture inside out backwards, but if we haven't been touched by his fire, if we haven't been brought into to a place with him, uh, you know, it just takes you to a wholly new level. And so I'm believing that as we gather, that the overflow that's going to come out of these gatherings and meetings is that his body is going to experience and have, we're, we're going to be going places. And, and I'm believing even for ascensions, group ascensions, you know, where he's going to take us in together. And, uh, but the attack upon Canada to repress the ecclesia for the, the things that are trying to suppress and, and the evils that they're trying to bring into our, our nation, we have to, we must stand up. We must. You know, speaking about the dragon, I keep, you know, I, I put it in my prophetic word at the head of the year for Fatine. She wanted, and I, I, I couldn't help it. But when I look, I just see this dragon wrapped around the peace tower. You know, now you had been speaking. Now, to be really clear, for those, I, I pray that you've been following for a while, but there was an incredible prophetic sign that was fulfilled, a prophetic sign that was written in Revelation 12.1. The Revelation 12 woman, as 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 it says, and on in verse one it says a great sign appeared in the heavens. That whole sign appeared and happened. Study it out on Rosh Hashanah of 2017, the year 5777, crossing over to 5778. You know, and uh, after the completion of five and three sevens, that completed the year. An incredible sign in the heavens. Boom. But verse two, Barry. And then I saw another sign, a dragon. And boom, 2020, or even in 2019, something is released 
out of communistic China. And it's, it, it's what would that virus look like if it was an actual spirit or what is the spirit behind it? I'll say it like that. But you have had visions, words that are coming to pass, things that are coming true about you seeing communism in the nation of Canada. And by the way, my word that I gave to the Canadian Council in 2017, I said, I see a darkness coming in the year 2020. Stacy and Stacy Campbell said, then then do it. Do the national gatherings. Well, we did it. And 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 we're not going to lose the harvest. And in actual fact, I think the ecclesia is getting a whole lot stronger. But the dragon's been released. You saw something as far as it, you know, being in Canada uh, and uh, 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 physical manifestations, even through communistic leaders in, in you know, uh, the Communistic Party of, of China, yeah. CPP. Yeah. So why don't you just just quickly, for those who may not know, yeah. uh, you know, and, and uh, what you saw or what you see. Well, I, I've seen different things. I mean, a, a couple of years ago, I was taken and I saw a red dragon over a tree and uh, all these branches and it wound its tail in and around and it was trying to take that thing down and shake it. And, and as hard as it tried to pull, uh, I mean, it could not, I mean, it, but it shook the, 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 every branch, every nation was shaken as, and then, so then we end up with COVID and, you know, all the things that kind of rolled out of, out of all of that. And then of course we, we saw what that did, uh, you know, globally, but, you know, I, I was taken in, you know, within Ken, I was taken in by the spirit. I was showing uh, these troops, uh, boots on the Boots on the ground here in in Canada with with these kind of you know things going on. Boots yeah. on the ground in Canada, and uh, now it's being exposed. All these Chinese yeah. police stations—they're actually admitting it. Yeah, I mean, we had a, we had a brother uh, through the Patriot, you know, gatherings that, you know, they'd come and and uh, their family was hunting in northern Quebec. <clears throat> Came over, uh, you know, a, a big hill, and here's you know, here's a massive camp in you know the middle of nowhere northern quebec uh you know down in in uh, southern alberta more reports there similar things uh the west coast uh, you know we actually got a, a friend out there that actually ran into uh they, they were actually doing some in intercession going around praying around all these totem poles and things on the west coast and uh they come around the corner and there was actually a a soldier in military, Russian military uniform, standing on guard. And they were led right up to him. What are you doing here? You know, and he, this guy got on his phone, starts talking Chinese, right? Like it's closer, like, and of course the infiltration within Canadian uh, investments and, and the things that they hold and control that way, even in Northern Alberta, I know it, oil sands in Fort McMurray, you know, one of our greatest assets here in Canadian resources, the investment portfolios that, that are owned by, you know, the, the Chinese, um, you know, people, it, it is, it is very concerning. And so the path that we're on to, to be, you know, uh, to become a, you know, post-national nation, uh, lest the church rise up, we're, we're on, on that path. And so, so the, the, we need to gather, we need to be, you know, pressing in and, and as Ecclesi in these moments, taking our governing position and making the decrees and the declarations and, and, and enforcing what is ours and what, what we're supposed to walk in. And so, uh, you know, I believe that that is where we're called to that. And if we sit passively by and, and uh, come under you know these these regimes that are are hard at play. You know we, we even have uh, you know there's even evidence as far as you know our our prime minister and his investments involved in the back end of some of these things. So my question is where are the other leaders? Why isn't this being talked about? And why isn't there justice being served? So ecclesia, I mean we we need to stand up in this nation. Uh, we need to like this isn't over. And uh, we've got a window now. God is pouring it out. 
and we we have to be be uh, paying attention. So thank you, Art, for facilitating uh, and answering the call for this. And uh, I believe that as we go on, it we're going to see much great fruit come. Whew. Absolutely, because you know what? Uh, and Melissa Goldtooth says, yeah, I've seen the, the, the dragon over the Pacific Ocean, um, you know, and blasts were hitting our coast. So what happened, Melissa, in 2019, um, <clears throat> now it's proven that China infiltrated even the, the mountain of government and helped swing the election, moved in. The dragon was invited in to the top. Uh, right. the, the, the pinnacle of the nation, Ottawa. It yeah. sits on the Peace Tower. And then, of course, um, uh, evil people partnering with, you know, the Wuhan lab, uh, releasing this on the world, causing such devastation. And uh, it is absolutely invited in. I'm going to say this, though, Barry. God's got a plan. And you know what? God's got a plan. And the answer to this darkness is the fire and the breath of God. Yes. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises up a standard. Yes, he does. And you know what? And we're watching it. We're seeing it. We're feeling it. That's why we've got the 24-7 prayer wall going three years now. That's why we're saying yes to being a family, not a denomination, not a network, not just another network, not just another good old boys club, but an alliance, a coalition of ministers and ministries, men and women of the fivefold of intercessors and musicians, business people, politicians, different ones, coming together, partnering together to stand on guard for Canada. And um, so um, anyway, um, yes. there, 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 something's going on right now too. You were just on Elijah List. Can you tell us what's, what's I mean, I've heard some things. Trump being indicted, you know, there was an emergency broadcast. And by the way, I want to say this for our viewers. Albany, Oregon, the Elijah List is an eagle's nest. Bob Jones <clears throat> uh, prophesied that there are three. He spoke about three eagle's nests. He taught about it. There's three. Uh, Redding, California, Albany, Oregon, and Kelowna, British Columbia. Interesting. Ooh. Interesting, Barry. You were with one eagle's nest leader there. Uh, on a on a on a on a program to get the 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 message out, and here you are now on a, at another Eagles Nest location, getting the word out. I'm yeah. just saying, this is cool. I love this stuff. We thank you, Lord, that the enemy not can will not be able to suppress. By the way, yeah. when Canada rejected the move of God in the restoration movement, forty years almost to the day, it popped up again in Kelowna. And the Apostolic Center was birthed. The prophetic movement of Canada, Canadian Council came out of here. Worship came out of here with David Roos. Just saying, God always has the last word. So what's the last word? What's going on here in the States? And what's a word for us here in Canada? Yeah. How can we support? How can we stand? Well, you know what? We're, we're in a moment right now that, uh, you know, the enemy is doing all that he can. I mean, to try and stop... Um, a godly governance from taking position and uh you know god took me into an encounter here that i did post it uh, a couple days ago um you know that you know i saw an ebs uh, emergency broadcast warning go out mm. and uh and there were some things that that were on 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 uh unveiling but the father he is he has got a plan that behind it um He's using it to expose everything that can be exposed. And he is raising up that standard that you're talking about. But it is, uh, I, you know, there is some dark, you know, we have a few hours that are, we're going to go through here where it's going to look a bit, uh, a bit dark. But right. at the end of the day, the father, you know, he's got a plan where he's exposing and he is bringing light to these things. And it's going to be a cognitive, you know, we're going to go into a cognitive dissidence when we see what they've been hiding and what has all really been going on, you know, a lot of these offices, a lot of these places and the <clears throat> satanic roots in which, and some of the things that they do are just appalling. 
and uh, and the Lord, he is not going to stand idly by and let that happen. And, you know, so I actually shared this, you know, as I get some of these, you know, these words, you know, there's different leaders and ones that were involved with it. I'll share, share them with, and I, you know, I can't name them by name, but they, <clears throat> they're in positions of authority in the back end that they can validate the things that, that we're seeing and sharing. <coughs> and uh, we're, we're so over the target here right now. And, you know, I guess, you know, it, it's, it's quite a long word. I, I would encourage those that haven't seen it to, yeah. to, 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 to look at it, check it out. But there's a, an exposure that's yet to come <coughs> here within our nation that we're going to be surprised. And, uh, but we're going to see his body rise up and uh, bring truth and bring healing and deliverance. And we're going to see supernatural, unusual signs, wonders, and miracles as we walk this thing out. And so there's a, be pre, you know, just be postured and ready for it because he'll use anyone. I mean, he's no respecter of persons. He'll put you in an, un, in an uncomfortable place to bring it, sometimes an uncomfortable word to bring a breakthrough in love. And, uh, and then, boy, we need more of that. Well, you know, for the nation of Canada, I just want to remind Canada that uh, um, I went, um, that, that there was an election in 2021. Uh, Trudeau uh, took that one as well. Um, but the day before I'd been saying, and the Lord showed me, I'm just, I'm just going to say, I feel, I feel it's got to be the Lord because Satan doesn't know the future. If Satan would have known the future, he would have never crucified Christ. It was to his undoing. Yes. He does not know. Only God can see the future. Yes. The Lord spoke to me. I was clear. I said, and I think you were on my program as well, right around that time. It's like, I saw Trudeau win a minority. And I knew that Aaron O'Toole would lose. And I said, he will be removed. He won't even step down graciously. He'll just be removed. It all happened. I called the election before that. I'm just, the reason I'm saying is like, ooh, look at Art Lucier. No, no. What I'm saying is God does speak. Surely the sovereign Lord does nothing, as it says in Amos yeah. 3, 7. Bef <clears throat> before, and Unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. That's right. I spoke about a communist communism coming when there was the leadership race between O'Toole, Peter McKay, Derek Sloan, Leslin yeah. Lewis, and Fatine. I was on a program. I said, you must vote for Leslin Lewis because it's our chance for her to hold back communism, at least for a good while. And, and she phones, she goes, what do you think of the program? I said, unfortunately, I said, I know in my spirit, I've shown me that Aaron O'Toole will win. I seen even far back as uh, Maxim Bernier and, and Stephen Harper when they went for, sorry, Andrew Shear. And the Lord says, Andrew Shear is going to win it. But lo and behold, on the last full moon of, 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 of the decade of 2019, as a dragon was coming in, Last full moon, December 12th, 1212, Andrew Shear resigns. And the Lord spoke to me very clearly. It's time for the ecclesia to arise. We're stuck with Prime Minister number 23. Yes, we're going to get number 24 here in time. I'm going to, and I, I, I tell you this, I said it before, Trudeau's own, own caucus is going to turn against him. I believe I've seen that. His own caucus is going to turn against him. He will not be going into the next election he will not be the prime minister again that's what i see and if i need that's all i can say is what i see people say you shouldn't say that okay maybe i shouldn't i'm sorry but i do because that's simply what what i see and i have to be there's going to be but i'm going to tell you this pierre polyev is not the savior and what i mean by that is that it's time now for the ecclesia to arise shake off our religiousness shake stand up not be cowards not be fearful come together and to pin and to kill this 
stronghold, this snake in the nation of Canada. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There's a, you know, I mean, we get information coming in at different times. And, you know, the night of the last election, there was a, a military leader from Canada that reached out to one of our American uh, friends. And there were still people in the lineup at the at the polls. And the Canadian military on those higher levels, they'd actually been given a briefing that the candidate was in office and prepare the military for mobility. They, as much as we be, want to believe that we're in a democracy, and this is, and, I, and I'm, this is hard for people to maybe choke down. It kind of goes down like a frog sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> but, but from the things of which I'm aware, some of what you know we can go through the motions, but there are still powers above all the parties that are still pulling the strings and deciding what comes out of the election box. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, so there's, there's things that are in play even today that, right. that as things unfold, um, dude, you know, what a great day it is. Yeah. Holy moly. Yeah. <laughs> I feel it. Yeah. It's incredible. As great as the warfare is, and people, Canada, please pray for Barry and Judy. Oh, oh but we're not going to go into it too much here. But yeah, Barry, we love you, and we um, oh, we're also you. out of time. Thank you. Here. Thank we're you. We're out of time, and and you were you you were with with uh, one eagle's nest. Now this one, we're yeah. so grateful, and we'll see you in Woodstock, Barry. Yes, we'll see you in a couple of days. May the Lord absolutely heal, restore. And all that the enemy is taking and trying to take from you. In Jesus' name, we love you, Barry. And we'll you see are. you next time. We'll see you next time, my brother. All yeah. right. Fantastic. Well, Canada, that's our own very beloved Barry Wunsch. Him and Judy are so loved. Such an integral part to the Re Revival Reformation Alliance. Joining us in Woodstock, as well as uh, many other leaders and the Holy Ghost. And I see what you said there, uh, Melissa. Uh, the Psalm 23 challenge. Yeah, memorize it, post it online, and challenge some other people. Psalm 23, this is the year to know the Lord is shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me, leads me on paths of righteousness for his namesake. <clears throat> he, he, and though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. And surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I haven't met, I haven't quoted that for probably you know, five, uh, six weeks or so. Anyway, I hope I got it right. Psalm 23 challenge to all of you guys. Well, remember, surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without first revealing his secrets to his servants, the prophets, Amos 3, 7. This has been another edition of Eagle Eye, Prophetic Perspectives with Art Lucy and Friends. Have an incredible week, and we'll see you in Woodstock. First, we'll see you on the reset, the Revival Reformation reset. See you then. God bless you guys. Have a great weekend. <laughs>